Okay, let's see what this tool does here. All right, let me go to the remove tool. These guys need to go. Let's see how this works. Let's see if they just disappear. I'm kind of skeptical. Nothing seems that easy. What? Okay, hold on a second. How about you? Huh. Holy cow. That's an awesome tool. Woo! <laughs> Man, Adobe has just blessed us with some new stuff in May of 2023, halfway through the year. This is some pretty cool stuff. Now, a lot of people are talking about generative AI. I don't show anything that's happening in beta. So if you came here to look at this generative AI stuff, I'm not going to show you that. Instead, I'm going to show you three other things that Adobe has added that I think are going to be very advantageous to our workflow. Without hesitation, let's jump right in. Okay, so the first thing that you're probably going to be really excited about is this new tool that they've put in here. It's the remove tool. This remove tool, when I opened up Photoshop, I found it with the rest of my other tools like the spot healing tool, the healing brush, and now we have the remove tool. So you might think to yourself, well, how could this be any different than what we already have in our uh, Photoshop? Well, I'm going to show you. So let me go ahead and duplicate uh, this layer here. I'm just going to press Command Control J so you can see the differences on here. So I'm going to zoom in. I got a lot of things going on down here. This is the Vista House that overlooks the Columbia River Gorge. I was just there a couple weeks ago. It's absolutely fantastic. And with these shots, I was even thinking to myself, well, I, I kind of have to throw this away now because, you know, there's all these people all over the place. I don't even know if I'm going to be able to use it. It's going to be a lot of clone work. And then I got lucky and Photoshop came out with this remove tool. So let's actually remove all the distractions in this and see how well it works. It's pretty simple and easy to use. It's not like what you're going to find in the spot healing tool where you have all these options here. It's super simple. It's like this AI thing that's basically saying, I got you covered. There's not much more you need to do here than make your brush larger or smaller. So the other, only real other option that you're going to have here is this remove after each stroke, and I'll talk about that in a second. So I'm going to click on this and remove this sign, just kind of click over it and see how well it does with getting rid of this sign. Okay, it's going to think a little bit. Boom. Awesome. Look at that. Okay, now I can go over these people and look at that. Awesome. It even keeps the holes that are in the architecture there. Now, if I click on this button here, it says remove after each stroke. After you paint, it'll give you the option to either revert that or not have deselected or press the check mark on it to let it go. So what you could do with that is essentially cover up a lot of things in the image. You can just go like this and then move over here like this and make sure you get that shadow in there. Otherwise, it's not going to be realistic. Let's get grandma out of here. Sorry, grandma. And then we're going to come over here and get this couple out of here. Okay, and we're going to cover all that. Okay, they have a shadow too, so make a brush a little bit smaller. We'll do this. We'll see. I'm, I, don't, I haven't even tested this yet, so I don't even know how well this tool is going to work after making all of these selections. But I'm going to see if we can do all of it all at the same time. Hey, nice house back there, but it, you're a distraction. You got to go. Yeah, you too. Okay, sorry. And then we'll get this lady right here. And let's just see what happens if we press the check mark on this and if it gets rid of all of them without replacing it with funky things. Like, I don't want to see foliage over here. And it worked. <laughs> oh, man. That's awesome. Okay, let's get rid of these people, too. This is really cool. Like, just open up a photo that you have where you need to get rid of a bunch of things, and this will be a great tool for you. I stu still do think that there is some real benefit in uh, understanding how these tools work as far as like the clone stamp tool and many others. So, you know, I wouldn't discredit that because you might find that even in this image, we have some things that we need to uh, use some other techniques on. So let's just cover up these people and then see what happens. And then we'll move on to some harder things in this image and see if it works. Okay, we'll press that check mark and then let's see what's going on here. Hopefully it'll still leave us a little hole there. It didn't, but you know, I don't think that the viewer would really know any different. Okay. So let's try some harder things here or some more detail oriented things here. I'll move in here and let's go ahead and cover this person. I'm going to draw on the things and then I'll come back. That way you don't have to sit here and watch me do all this. All right, let's see if it covers these up for us. Press that check mark and see what happens. I have a feeling that this is going to be very difficult down here for this image, but we'll see what happens. Okay, let's take a look here. We'll zoom in here, and at the bottom, it looks like we have some funky little steps here. So let's see what happens if we do this again and, and see if it can fill in that space. It's doing a little bit better of a job. Sometimes you might have to do it once or twice. Let's see what's going on over here. It's almost like we have this kind of MC Escher-esque style thing going on here, and this just replaced that wall with a lot of junk. 
Again, I said that this might not be perfect for a difficult task like that. Let's see if I can get rid of this orange thing with these little posts here. And we'll press the check mark. I'm going to turn that off because I kind of like it after each stroke. And that looks pretty good. It did a pretty good job. So with this, for instance, right here, that's probably not going to be very good. Uh, one of the other things that they added here was actually this contextual bar. This is actually pretty cool because this bar actually gives you some ideas of what to do in your workflow next. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But what could I do here to fix this beyond this? Well, one thing that I would probably do here is just grab this area right here. Okay, just like that. Press Control J to duplicate it and then Control T and then right click and then flip horizontal and move this over to this side. And I think that this could probably fool most viewers uh, into thinking and most people who've probably been here would be like, wait a second, I, I didn't see that the last time I was there. Uh, but this could be something that you could do to uh, fill in that gap a little bit, clean this up a little bit, maybe delete some things here that we don't need from this layer like that, and then that would be all right. Now we'd still have to do some possible curves adjustment layers on that and some fine tuning. But the point is, is that this tool, while very powerful, is still gonna struggle with things that we would even struggle with as a human being, okay? So now let's look at the other feature that I really love. Uh, this is a feature that I, I, I've been dying to be in Photoshop for a very long time, and that's editable gradients right on top of your image. If you've followed me for any uh, amount of time, you know that I absolutely love gradients. I can't live without gradients in my workflow, and the way they've implemented gradients now is awesome. At first, I thought this was only in the gradient tool itself, but it's actually in the gradient adjustment layer as well. So first, let's talk about what a gradient is. It's basically just a way to add either a spot to our image or uh, maybe a, a, a linear uh, transition to our image, which you probably will see with things like masking in Adobe Camera on Lightroom. I use them more for creative purposes with creative blend modes to draw the viewer's attention towards places. So this is an image of Panther Creek Falls. And here I am, I had my buddy Jason Matias go ahead and click the uh, shutter for me there after I took a picture of him in the same spot. Pretty cool. It's a beautiful spot for a hero shot. <laughs> so let's see if we can draw attention more towards this area. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the gradient tool and I'm going to go ahead and click and then move. And this is typically what I would do in the past. But now you see that we have a really functional gradient editor here. Now, this is going to be how big that transition is from the uh, from how it's the scale from being a very small spot to a very big one. These spots that you see here are going to basically change the uh, feathering of the colors that we have in this. So we have a black on the outside and a tan on the inside based on the gradient that I've chosen. Now, if you have a two color gradient or even a one gradient like this, this is a black to transparency. So nothing's going to happen when we move this. It's only going to be dictated by this. But when you have multiple colors in a gradient like this one, this will dictate the size of the one color over the other color. As we move this over, you can see how big that gets. Now, I did say I use this as a creative tool. So let's see what happens when we reverse this because I want to draw the attention towards me and then change this to something like the soft light blend mode. And then I put this here and I can start changing the direction of this. Obviously, that's going to be way too much for this image. Here, I'd probably drop the opacity, maybe change the blend mode and experiment a little bit. But these editable gradients right here are awesome. Now, in the past, what would happen with a gradient layer here, when you added a gradient here, this would be a, a gradient that would not be uh, able to be changed. Uh, now, what happens is when you use the gradient tool, it actually puts a gradient fill on here, which is awesome because now it makes it really easy to change this. If we change this to linear, if we change this to reflected, this is all going to change what's happening as we double click in here to uh, the, uh, the items that are here. So this isn't the same as it used to be. The gradient tool in the past wasn't as good as the gradient editor, but now that we have the gradient editor inside the gradient tool, things are awesome. So now let's see what happens if we put a gradient on here. So I'm just going to put a regular gradient on here. Okay. And this gradient, um, let's just go from the bottom to the, to, to the top with this linear kind of effect. Typically what you'd have to do in the past with this in the gradient fill is you'd have to increase the scale here, which would then uh, transition from the bottom towards the top. Okay. And that's the, where we are transitioning our gradient because this is linear. It's going to start here. And then as we change the scale, this was the way we edited it in the past. And we changed the angle by doing this kind of thing. Now, once I press okay on this, watch what happens. 
if we have the gradient tool selected, it automatically allows us to edit this gradient here. So if you've ever taken my gradient course or heard me discuss gradients, the only way to edit or modify a gradient later was to double click inside of here and go back into the gradient fill. Well, now with the gradient tool over here, it actually allows us to edit a gradient uh, adjustment layer. So it's almost like the adjustment layer and the tool are one and the same now, which they never were in the past, which is absolutely incredible for our workflow. Again, changing this to something like soft light or maybe even uh, something like linear dodge to dodge this, to brighten this up. I'll go ahead and reduce that opacity there. Uh, actually with color dodge, it works off of fill so I can reduce this fill and brighten that area up there and uh, change the color maybe. If I double click on this, I could change the color and I'll change the color to something like an orangish color so it matches this image a little bit better uh, because that's kind of the color that we're using anyway for things that are happening to make it warmer instead of cooler. You see that? Now, I can modify this at any point. If I come in here and I try to adjust this, nothing's gonna happen. And the reason why is because this is, again, a color to transparency. So the way to modify this is going to be to uh, change the scale of it like this using this uh, tool right here and then chase the, pl the placement or the angle of it by swinging this back and forth. Man, this is awesome for our workflow. Absolutely incredible. Now, this is a very tricky thing to replace here. Let's see what happens if we use this uh, remove tool right here on this guy, because this was very difficult even for me to replace one branch here with our current tools that we had in Photoshop before the update. So let's see what happens if I just go a little bit at a time and try to cover this up. Sometimes it might need some time to think and it might not cover everything. You might have to do it in small shifts and small pieces and then work your way from the small pieces. That's what I've kind of found with this tool. For some reason, it does not want to get rid of that branch at all. It just keeps making it bigger. But let's see what happens if we use something like a clone stamp tool here and clone this. Okay, let's start by cloning this. I think what's happening is that tool is getting confused. So we'll start by cloning that and then we'll use this tool and see what happens as we move that up. And boom, that did it. So it looked like because it was connected at the bottom, the little AI tool was like, hold on a second, do you really want me to do that? And that's fixed, much better, much better, wow. That was actually very difficult to me for me to even replace a single branch. Now, it does look like we have some hot stuff going on down here, so I would probably fix that, patch that in, and fill that in with something else. But these new tools are awesome. The last thing is this contextual bar that they have here that I wanna talk about. And with this contextual bar, it kind of gives you some workflow walkthroughs. So with this, it's saying, okay, we can remove the background, we can select the subject. So let's see what happens if I do this. I'm gonna go ahead and press select subject. It's right here. It makes a selection for me. And then once it makes that selection, it's gonna change things. It's saying, well, what do you wanna do? Do you wanna refine this? Do you wanna invert that selection? So maybe it selects everything outside of me. Do I wanna transform the selection? Do I wanna add a mask to this? Well, if you add a mask to it, everything else is gonna go away. Or do you wanna create some type of adjustment layer? So let's make a new adjustment layer and let's put a curves adjustment layer on here. So now you can see that after selecting that uh, subject, we can now come in here and then maybe modify that and brighten that up a little bit to maybe draw the attention there a little bit more too uh, if we wanted to do something like that. But it just gives us some, some ideas, okay? Now, you'll see that this contextual bar only comes up at certain times. It's not coming up on adjustment layers. It's only coming up on pixel layers. So adjustment layers, they know no bounds. They have no pixels. So you're not gonna see it contextually there, but you will see it when you click on something that has pixels. If we click on the mask, it doesn't have anything there for the contextual uh, idea for the mask, but it does for a pixel based layer like this. Even if we remove the uh, lock icon on there, we still have some other options that pop up there for that. But again, if you're on an adjustment layer, it's not gonna work out. So the three things I covered in this were the new remove tool, which is absolutely awesome, uh, much better than uh, some of the tools that we had in the past. It's not foolproof, so you will need to do some work on top of it, okay? You, you, you might need to do some clone work, you might need to do some clever patchwork. It's not gonna be 100% foolproof. The other thing is the gradients. The gradient tool is now kind of a hybrid gradient adjustment layer, which makes our gradient modification awesome. It's absolutely incredible. I love the, what they've done with that. 
and then that contextual toolbar that you can actually move around and experiment with really is only going to be for pixel layers. So when Adobe adds generative AI to the actual version of Photoshop, I will show you that. Until then, I will not be showing beta features. I certainly hope you enjoyed this. I certainly hope you enjoy the new tools that are in here. Thank you very much for taking the time to watch this. I do sincerely appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, please consider subscribing. I like to take difficult things in Photoshop and make them seemingly simple so you can use them in your workflow today.